Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today I want to talk about the subject of trolling and why people troll and what makes us want to troll. And to understand that, I think you have to look at the big five question of disagreeableness. Disagreeableness was a dimension made in how likely and how inclined you are to act on what you believe in. And I believe a troll is a person that uh, scores very low on agreeableness. They are inclined to be skeptical or distrustful or inclined to disagree. They are inclined to, uh, in a way, hold a sense of ambiguity towards morality. So the question is, is there anything that is worth fighting for? Is there anything worth uh, doing? Uh, doing? Is there some kind of morality that is righteous? And often I think trolls have this sense of uh, detachment towards these issues, so detachment towards value and a question of uh, what are people really fighting for. And I think often uh, disagreeable types are inclined to challenge. It doesn't have to always have to be about trolling or joking around or uh, pretending to, de or de devil's advocating. It can have to do with more like questioning other people's beliefs, finding holes in their reasoning, finding issues with what they say, and uh, finding flaws with what they do, Re just noticing when uh, things don't match out or when people are hypocritical or when people don't act in line with their morality and often morality has and always tends to have a few holes in it and we don't always live according to the values we believe in. And so the question is, if we can't always live up to the values we believe in, then what is the point of morality to begin with and where does morality come from and what is does it rest on? I think there can be a sense of... Uh, there can be a question of, can morality really be efficient? Can morality really be a good principle to organize society? And, uh, or should we just do what we want, <laughs> whatever the hell that might be? So uh, trolling, I believe, has its root. And uh, I, have my, I have a personal thought here. I think trolling ultimately rests with boredom. I think trolling and boredom goes hand in hand. You know, you know, when you kind of feel bored or don't know what to do or you're kind of uh, understimulated and you need something to do. I think uh, what we're inclined to do is we're inclined to uh, find somebody that believes in something and tend to try to kind of get their passion. You know, if you don't feel like you have passion, if you don't have meaning in your life, uh, then you kind of tend to want to get it from other people. And here's the kind of core issue of trolling. Uh, trolling uh, has so much to do with the uh, lack of meaning or lack of purpose. Disagreeable types all tend to say they lack a sense of purpose, that they don't know why they live or for what extent or for what point or for what greater purpose. And they lack a strong sense of personal passion, you know, having uh, something, a reason to get out of bed in the morning, you know, having something you want to do that you find inherently satisfying. You know, 70% of the people who have a job find their job to be completely worthless or meaningless. And, you know, that can create this kind of apathy. A lot of people don't have a job at all. No reason to wake up in the morning, nothing to give them a sense of passion. And I think that can make trolling a very rewarding or worthwhile activity. It can be a compensation for passion. You can take it and you can kind of get a sense of passion by surrounding yourself with people that are passionate and by challenging and testing their passion and seeing if you can get people to act in accordance with their passion. And you kind of get a thrill whenever you can get people to kind of um, s express or to show passion for something. When you can get another person to become kind of defensive or kind of... Uh, Ah, <laughs> angry with you or kind of upset or kind of rattled uh, you can get kind of a kind of you can get a kick from that because you kind of get their passion you get inspired by their passion you can't help but feel a little like yes and here's the thing like morality is a complex issue and we can't know for sure what is right and wrong and what's good and bad but we do know that the human mind has a tendency to create and attribute value to things. We have a tendency to say that things are meaningful. Our mind has a tendency to tell us that is meaningful and that is boring. Oh, schoolwork, I hate schoolwork, I don't want to do schoolwork. But video gaming and becoming a professional video gamer, I'm passionate about that. You can have that and you can kind of um, feel that. 
And here's uh, the issue with and the reason why a lot of people don't want to have a passion. Even if it feels good, even if passion feels awesome when you have it, it takes work. When you have a passion, you have to stand up for it. You have to answer to questions. People are going to challenge you on it. People are going to question you about it. They're going to joke at you, laugh at you, tell you you're stupid. And it's going to create work. Okay, I'm passionate about becoming a video gamer. Well, then I'm going to have to work for to become a professional video gamer. I'm going to have to play day in and day out. I'm going to have to invest a lot of energy in it. And what if I become bored by it? Or what if I don't succeed in it? And those like fundamental questions, I think, uh, bring up uh, the root of why people troll. If there is an easy way to get gratification by instead of doing something you find to be important... Uh, Instead, challenging people that do something important and getting their passion. Perhaps that's preferable. The problem here is that that kind of passion doesn't really last. Trolling becomes kind of a thing you have to keep on doing. You have to keep on pushing buttons, keep on finding flaws, keep on challenging and questioning. And uh, in that, whenever you can't do that, or whenever you're not around that person, you can't get their passion. You can't really get that sense of, ah. Oh, and uh, at some point people might just get annoyed with you and uh, stop hanging out with you. And that's also when it becomes uh, to the point of, oh, so I, where do I, am I going to get my passion? When, when am I going to have my good discussions with now? And uh, that's also why we kind of uh, gravitate towards finding a passion of our own. In the end, people kind of resign themselves to that, fuck it, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to become this anyway. Like people can take, some people realize what their passion is early in life and they start working towards it early. And some people wait until their 50s to do it. Some people keep thinking of reasons not to do it until they feel, realize I've been thinking about doing it for 50 years now. Fuck it, now, now is the time. Ne better late than never, you know. And uh, it happens to everybody. At some point, everyone fights, finds something worth fighting for. And it doesn't have to be like uh, something career-wise. It can be something about another person we love or somebody we care about or a friend in need. Uh, it can be about, um, you know, if we're professional rock collectors and we collect all kinds of rocks. Uh, like, uh, uh, and people start questioning us for que collecting rocks. At some point we go, hell, fuck it. I collect rocks, so what? I... I'm passionate about collecting rocks, and uh, who are you to question me on this? And uh, I think you can you can identify a whole group of thought patterns that can lead to trolling, and there are different ways of challenging and questioning other people. There are people that question what you do out of like genuine concern, uh, in the sense that they are worrywarts. They, if you say something. Uh, there is this uh, personality type called Enneagram 6 and uh, they have, they're prone to thinking of the worst case scenario of everything. So if uh, you bring up and say, I'm going to become a professional athlete, their first thought might be, but what if you get injured? And uh, that can be just the genuine concern, why they challenge you and why they are inclined to uh, question because they, they're worried. <laughs> they're worried about you genuinely, like they, they worry passion will... Uh, hurt you in some way or form and then there's uh, the skeptics you know the people that just want things to make sense like if you they, they want everything they do to make sense they want awareness more than everything the Enneagram 5 types the sages the sage types they they just want to make sure what they do makes sense before they do it they don't want to do something and find out it did, didn't make sense they don't want to do something and find out it wasn't going to lead anywhere so they think and they think and think and think until they realize, oh, I'm actually passionate about thinking. <laughs> and uh, that's what I'm supposed to do. And um, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense or not, but that's what I'm doing. Uh, and then there is uh, the Enneagram 7s. And I think when you get into Enneagram 7, uh, the explorer types, I think the explorer types are the most likely to be trolls. The INTP 7s, the introverted, intuitive thinking, perceiving seven types. They're the most inclined to devil's advocating, testing out, exploring loopholes, finding issues with what you say. Uh, and uh, in the most traditional sense of uh, coming up with counter arguments, uh, coming up with hypothetical scenarios, coming up with and brainstorming, like it's a practice for them. Like uh, you can understand 
uh, the thrill and the kick of it. And if you understand, to troll, a troll has to be creative enough to always think of counter arguments and to always think of uh, different personal viewpoints and different issues. They have uh, to always uh, uh, go inside and be very creative in thinking up like uh, various problems and issues. And that can give you a kick. Uh, it can give you like a sense of energy and fascination and stimulation. And it can give you a sense of balance and control. Uh, and uh, inherently that's what it's all about. You know, like getting that state of, uh, and getting that feeling of control and uh, of um, doing something and uh, being stimulated and having fun. Uh, you know that person at the party that uh, uh, has a tendency to always start arguing with the vegan or with the feminist that always goes uh, like they they get a genuine, they do it because they get a genuine kick out of it. Like it's just uh, this sense of stimulation and the richness and that's just important to them. And here's uh, our challenge. Our challenge is to find ways to give and to challenge people to explore their passion. We have to shift from their critique of us, from their challenge of us, into finding out what they value and what they are passionate about. It's about realizing that everyone has something they attribute value to. And it's about getting into that mindset where you can find, so what is it this person attributes value to? And there is always something. So you have to be smart about this. You have to go inside and introspect and go, so what does an INTP attribute value to? Well, for one thing, efficiency. <laughs> That's very important, you know, uh, maintaining efficiency and making sure your decisions are efficient and making sure you're not doing something that's illogical, uh, that goes against what you want to do or what you want to achieve or what you want to win. And uh, it's really about finding out a person's core values. If you know a person is a thinker, you have a great clue to what their core values are. Then you know that they value being productive, they value perhaps efficiency, they value perhaps uh, being logical, they value perhaps understanding mechanics and how things work, and they value perhaps pragmatism or results or what gives results. So just uh, look into that and uh, find out what that means in practice for that person. What kind of mechanics, uh, what the kind of results, what things. Uh, test and look underneath the surface and try to build up and build up a sense of passion in yourself. If you find that you are prone to trolling, that's the same the same thing goes for you. Like, what is it that I actually find passion, find myself passionate about? Um, go into yourself and kind of look at what arguments that you would get annoyed if people questioned. Uh, look at what uh, type of uh, situations that you wouldn't want to be in, what kind of outcome you want in every situation. I think uh, a lot of people believe they don't have a passion and then if uh, they would be put in a situation that they didn't like, they would realize very quickly, oh, there actually, there actually is something I want. Uh, I remember a time in my life uh, when I had kind of uh, become alienated from politics and uh, when I kind of felt uh, like an outsider. At some point there, I think, uh, I don't know what mattered to me anymore. I wasn't sure what was important. And then uh, at some point there, I began to feel a little, uh, that I began to realize that there was something that was important. And uh, I began to realize uh, how I had lived before then and how I lived after I realized I had something important. Because before I found out I had something that was still important to me, I didn't do pretty much anything. I didn't go to the cinemas, I didn't go out so much, I didn't talk to people as much as I did. I only did it when I had to and I was solely focused on work and on school and that was everything I did. Uh, but after I realized something was important to me, that's when I started taking care of myself on some level. Like making sure that I had good food, that I had good rest, that I had fun, that I went out and had experiences. Because I realized I needed that to be able to do what I cared about and what I found important in life. And uh, 
So that's my end message. We need to find a way to give people something important and we need to make sure people don't become easily discouraged so that they don't start questioning uh, their own values and their own passions. And uh, we need to make sure people don't give up too early and we need to make sure that people have support systems when they start believing in something, that there is a support system of people that will encourage you to believe in something, uh, people that will support you in developing your arguments and theories and thoughts. And uh, we need to be that arena. Like this community should be the arena where if a person has an idea, we all say, well, that's fascinating. Uh, what, so what will you do? How will you do that? We start helping out. We start building up. We start coming up with solutions to problems. We think of issues, sure, but we think of solutions as well. Um, perhaps that is the best way to combat trolling worldwide. Just give people a support system, give people something worth fighting for and make challenge more easy to overcome. I think perhaps, and I will leave you all with this, the biggest reason why people troll is because we feel we have insurmountable challenges ahead of us. If I am going to be successful, I have to study. If I'm going to study, I have to get a student loan. Uh, I have to pay for my studies. I have to find a way to finance it. I have to dedicate five years to studying it before I can do it. You know, all those challenges can feel so insurmountable, so long for a person that hasn't lived for that long and for a person that uh, doesn't uh, think further than the next day. And uh, then the question becomes, how can we build a more motivating society? How can we make challenges more easy to surpass? How can we make a five-year education seem worth it? How can we scale it down and make things into stairs rather than steep mountains? And uh, that's one of the reasons why society has so changed so much. Because we built a society that discourages people from having morals and that encourages people to not have morals. Because that just feels so much easier. <laughs>